Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to week four of one month to operationalizing your compliance program. This month, I'm proud to have as my sponsor, Oversight Systems. Some of the key points for Oversight's FCPA automatic transit action monitoring solution are that it provides a clear advantage to be able to monitor all of your transactions over an extended time horizon versus one transaction at a time, multiple sample-based approach. This longitudinal style analysis derives insights across employee expenses, expense reports, attendees, purchase orders, and merchants that can be difficult to uh, see with traditional audits. Oversight's library of FCPA analytics takes a risk-based approach to identify anomalies that may suggest compliance or FCPA concerns. Actions taken to review and resolve potential FCPA risk using built-in workflow are automatically documented and logged by the systems. This provides a document, 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 or defensible audit trail that demonstrates to internal or external stakeholders that there is a proactive monitoring of business transactions and the corrective action that was taken on those potential risks. The automation that Oversight provides around data acquisition, data analysis, and tracking, and the communication steps to resolve issues significantly lower the cost of compliance. Clients often see a reduction of 50% or more in effort when they are using the Oversight tool versus their previous approaches. Oversight can op- operationalize your compliance efforts to monitor your travel, entertainment, and procure to pay at a price point which is affordable in a time frame that's achievable. Finally, while there's no guarantee that you'll be able to prevent bad actors from circumventing controls, with insights on demand, the oversight tool, you'll have a best practice approach to identifying possible FCPA violations in travel, entertaining, entertainment, and procure to pay. In this final week of one month to operationalizing your compliance program, I'm going to look at tone in an organization at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. I'm going to look at operationalizing your compliance program through compensation incentives. And finally, I'm going to end with information on operationalizing your compliance program by putting it at the center of your corporate strategy. I hope you've enjoyed this one month to operationalizing your compliance program, and I hope you will join me next month where I take up one month to better third-party manage. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening. Day 23, operationalizing compliance by putting it at the center of your corporate strategy. Thank you for joining me on this final day of one month to operationalize your compliance program. And I conclude this series by discussing discussing how you can put compliance at the center of your corporate strategy. The reality is, as Sam Walton noted, there ain't customers at headquarters. If you and your team cannot make crucial connections between sales, strategy, and compliance, no matter how much you invest in social media or worry about disruptive innovations, you may end up extinct. This is a crucial problem when considering operationalizing compliance because operationalizing compliance is usually perceived as a top-down exercise. The reality is that the employee base must execute execute the compliance strategy, and that's not often considered enough. Even when there are comments back from employees on compliance initiatives, they are often derisively characterized as pushback and not taken into account in moving compliance forward. So what can you do to operationalize your compliance strategy? Well, first of all, communicate that compliance strategy. It's difficult for an employee base to implement a strategy they do not understand. Even with a company-wide training rollout, followed by a string of emails from headquarters and periodic reports back on the results, there are too few communications, they are usually one way, and the root cause of underperformance are often hidden from both groups. The problem is employees do not understand how to function within the parameters of an operationalized compliance program. And if that's so, then there's a training problem, and that's the fault of the compliance program. I was once subjected to a compliance training session, which consisted of a PowerPoint slide deck of 268 slides, which lasted 7.5 hours. To say this was worse than useless was accurate, or is accurate. The business guys were generally asleep one hour into the presentation as we went through the intricacies of the books and records legal citations to the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. The training was a failure 
but it was not the fault of the attendees. If your employees do not understand your compliance program, that's your fault as the compliance practitioner. Second, how about continually improving your compliance productivity? How do you incentivize productivity around compliance? I did an entire series, or excuse me, an entire podcast on incentivizing compliance by making it a part of your, a discretionary bonus calculation. Well, work with your HR department to come up with an appropriate financial incentives. Many companies have ad hoc financial awards, which they present to employees to celebrate and honor outstanding efforts. Why not give out something like that around doing business in, in compliance? Does your company have, uh, a, as a part of its bonus structure, dedicated to compliance and ethics? If so, how is this measured and administered? There's very little in the corporate world that em- employees notice more than what goes into the calculation of their bonus. HR Canon should facilitate this process by setting expectations early in the year, then following through when annual bonuses are, are released. With the assistance of HR, such a bonus can send a powerful message to employees regarding the seriousness with which compliance is taken at your organization. There's nothing like putting your money where your mouth is for people to stand up and take notice. I'd also ask you to think about the operationalization of this prong when you bring HR in. If you have HR overseeing the discretionary bonus compliance component, you have more fully operationalized your compliance program. But there's another area HR can help, and that's the human element in your compliance program. More than ongoing assessment of employees for uh, promotion to leadership, HR can assist on the ground floor. HR can assist in taking the lead in asking questions around compliance and ethics in the interview process. Studies have suggested that uh, certainly Gen Xers and Gen Yers appreciate these inquiries and want to work for companies that make such business ethics as a part of the discussion in the hiring process. By having that discussion in the interview process, you not only set expectations, but you begin the training process on compliance. But this approach should not end when the employee is hired. HR can also assist in your compliance efforts by tracking employees through their company career to identify those who perform high on any compliance metric. They can also facilitate delivery of more focused compliance training to those who may need it because of changes in in compliance risk during their career. Next, make your compliance strategy relevant to the business unit. Most C-suite level executives know that value creation levers the operationalization of the factors that affect it. In the sales world, this could translate into reduction in assets to underperforming activities. This is all well and good, but these actions must be coupled with an understanding of why sales might be underperforming in certain areas. In the compliance realm, I think this translates into two concepts, ongoing monitoring and risk assessment. Ongoing monitoring allows you to move from a simple prevent mode to a more prescriptive mode where you can uncover violations of your company compliance program before they become full-blown FCPA violations. By using an ongoing risk assessment process, you can take the temperature of where and how your company is doing business and determine if new products or service offerings have increased your compliance risk. Finally, you need to get out and tell the story of compliance. And this is could be led by the compliance function, but I'd also ask for you to, to consider using this or using senior executives to do this. I've talked about the CEO as the compliance ambassador, but maybe you should consider having multiple compliance ambassadors at your executive level. You may have to repeat something at least 10 times for an organization to fully internalize it. If there's a disconnect between your compliance strategy and how your employee base is implementing or even interpreting that strategy, get out of the office, go to the field, and get your senior managers to do the same. But you need to do more than simply talk. You also need to listen. By doing so, you can align your compliance strategy with both delivery and in the field and more fully operationalize your compliance program. So what are the three key takeaways for today? Number one, use information from your employees to make your compliance program more effective. In other words, listen. Number two, 
Use social media and other innovative techniques to communicate your compliance strategy down to the troops. Remember, social media is a two-way communications tool. And finally, I thought I would end with the three most important things in a compliance program, which are document, document, document. But I think to end this series and today, I will end with the three most important things are operationalize, operationalize, operationalize. Of course, within that, you need to document your operationalization. But each one of these steps that I've suggested today, and indeed in each day throughout this one-month series, have been ways that you can operationalize your program, hopefully at a uh, relatively low cost, or at least have a way to measure your program or put uh, information in front of senior management, which would help them to understand how and why you should operationalize a compliance program and input or input implement the 46 questions listed in the evaluation of corporate compliance programs. I hope you've enjoyed this one month series and I hope that you will join me for the month in April when I look at the third party risk management process. This is Tom Fox and I'd like to thank you very much for listening to today's episode of how to operationalize your compliance program. If you have any questions you can reach out to me at tfox at tfoxlaw.com. If you've listened to this podcast via iTunes, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate us. It would help in our rankings and help get the word out about how to learn about operationalizing your compliance program in one month. This is Tom Fox. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow.